Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I wanted to talk about kind of interesting items that give you a pretty sizable stat bonus. Now most people know what the meta items are or whatever the most common items that are used for each three attack styles and for each three defensive styles. However, there are actually quite a few items in the game that give nearly as good or even in some cases better stat bonuses than what is viewed as the normal item to wear. I'll give you some examples here soon. Some of these might be quest items, diary rewards, or just lesser known alternative items that you can use in certain circumstances. I'm going to be having a look at 15 lesser known items that actually give pretty good stat bonuses. Anyway guys, hope you enjoy and let's get started. Coming up first here is the cream hat. Now a lot of people don't realize that the cream hat actually has a higher magical attack bonus over the wizard hat. A lot of people when they start off they just buy the wizard hat because you know, it has the word wizard in its name and you do assume it would be a decent piece of early game magical equipment. However, the cream hat or really any other hat bought from the gnome stronghold or from the Canifus hat shop all have one more magical attack bonus over the wizard hat. Considering both of these items are extremely cheap and getting any extra magical attack bonus especially in the early game is extremely important. I would recommend always buying the cream hat or any other variant of it when you are starting off training your magic. Coming in at number two is the Ancient Mitre. The Ancient Mitre is part of the Ancient Vestiment set, and you can buy it directly from the Grand Exchange. For people who are not Iron Men, the Ancient Mitre actually has the exact same bonuses as a Mystic Hat, however it also offers a plus five prayer bonus. The Ancient Mitre is currently around 25k, and the Mystic Hat is around 10k, so I mean it's slightly more expensive, however the prayer bonus is extremely useful. If you do happen to have the 40 prayer and 40 magic requirement, I would highly recommend buying the Mitre over the Mystic Hat, assuming you can get one for a good price. Price. Coming in at number 3 is the Ardune Cloak. Now, the Ardune Cloak 1, 2, 3, and 4 all give magical attack and defense bonuses as well as a prayer bonus. The Ardune Cloak 2 especially fills a pretty nice niche. You can get the Ardune Cloak 2 before you get your god cape if you really need to, and it's a good interim cape to wear before you get the plus 10. Coming in at number 4 we have the Lunar Gloves. The Lunar Gloves are a reward for completing the Lunar Diplomacy quest. They do require 65 magic and 40 defense to wear, however they provide an extremely cheap option for magic attack bonus in your glove slot. They offer one less magical attack bonus over infinity gloves, which cost around 2 mil. They are better than mystic gloves and can be purchased for 10,000 GP in this store. Honestly, the whole lunar set is pretty decent, although at 65 magic you may already have upgrades for other slots, however the lunar gloves in particular offer a pretty good niche use for their combat stats and their requirements. Coming in at number 5 is the Zamorak Halo. The Zamorak Halo is an item you can buy from the Castle Wars shop for 75 Castle War tickets and I think it offers the highest magical defense in the head slot in the entire game. It has a magic defense of 11 and it's very interesting to me that it's from a Castle Wars reward which generally are cosmetics. It offers a plus 11 magic defense as well as plus 3 prayer which is higher than the Armadale Helmet which has a plus 10 magic defense and a plus 1 prayer bonus. So if for some reason you have a lot of extra Castle Wars tickets I would recommend buying the Zamorak Halo because it might actually have a niche use in some of your combat. Coming in at number 6 is the Obsidian Plate Legs. Now the entire Obsidian set actually is pretty good. It is a very good mid-tier item that actually offers an offensive strength bonus. However, the Plate Legs in particular are one of only two leg armors that actually give a strength bonus. The other one being Bandos Tacits, which are exponentially more expensive. The Obsidian Plate Legs give a plus one strength bonus, where the Bandos Tacits give a strength bonus of two. However, they cost 34 mil, where the Obsidian Plate Legs only cost around one mil. So they're 34 times more expensive to get one more strength bonus. I mean, obviously the Bandos Tacits give a higher defensive bonus as well. However, to get that one strength bonus really isn't too expensive. And I would recommend wearing the Plate Legs if you really are just focusing on offensive strength and don't need too many defensive stats. Coming in at number 7 is the Dwarven Helmet. The Dwarven Helmet actually offers the highest crush attack bonus in the entire game. It's an item reward from the Grim Tales quest and essentially has a value of 60k because you can buy it from the shop for 60,000 GP. Now this isn't to say that the uh, Dwarven Helmet is the best in slot at monsters that are weak to crush because it doesn't actually have a melee strength bonus. If you compare it to the Serpentine Helm, yes it has a plus 6 crush attack bonus which the Serpentine Helm doesn't have. However the Serp Helm has a plus 5 melee strength bonus making it superior in most cases. However I find it really interesting that a random quest item actually offers the highest crush attack bonus in the entire game. However for people who can't afford higher tier helmets, the Dwarven Helmet might actually be a viable item uh, to wear when you are killing monsters that are weak to crush. Next up here coming in at number 8 is the New Crystal Shield. 
The Crystal Shield offers the highest range to defense in the entire game and it is notably higher than any other offhand slot. The Crystal Shield offers a ranged defense bonus of 80, where the next best item is the Dragonfire Shield which offers a ranged defense of 22. This item is an absolute beast when it comes to any circumstance where you need to maximize your ranged defense. To get this item you need to complete the Roving Elves quest, and you do need to have a defense level of 70 and an agility level of 50. Now the big downside to this item is it does have a pretty substantial repair cost, however if you're doing stuff like God Wars it is definitely worth it. Alright, coming up next here is the Black Spiky Vams. Now, I'm going to be first to say this, I don't think these are actually that useful anywhere, but I thought it was kind of an interesting item that a lot of people uh, might not know about. For those who don't know, you can attach Keba Claws to the Black Dragonhide Vam Braces, as well as really any other Dragonhide Leather. What it does is it pretty much takes the stats of the Black Dehyde Vams and gives it a plus two strength bonus. Now, is this ever going to be that useful? Probably not, but I thought it was kind of interesting. I've never heard of this item before. And maybe if you just haven't managed to upgrade a piece of your equipment in a long time, you're just itching to upgrade your stats even by a little bit, just throw Kebaclots on it. Who cares? Coming in at number 10 is the Bearhead. The Bearhead is obtained by killing the Kentel as part of the Mountain Daughter quest. Now this item is kind of popular amongst uh, one defense peers, as it offers some of the highest defensive bonuses for those accounts. Now one notable thing for a helmet slot is it has a very high magic defense bonus, especially when you consider that you can wear it at level 1 defense. Its magical defense bonuses are so high, it's only second to a few items which include the 3rd Age Mage Hat, the Armadale Helmet, and some items from a Barbarian Assault. Coming in at number 11 is the Ghostly Robe Set. It is obtained by completing the Curse of the Empty Lord mini quest, and actually has no requirements to wear while also offering a decent magical attack bonus, especially if you have the entire set. For example, the Ghostly Boots offer a magic attack bonus of 2 and can be worn with no magic requirement or any requirement of any sort. The Ghostly Gloves give a magic attack bonus of 2, not as useful because you can get combat bracelet. It's actually a decent set to go for right away and it looks really cool at that. Next up here coming at number 12 is the Beacon Ring. The Beacon Ring is from the What Lies Below quest, and you can obtain it from Zaf for free. The Beacon Ring offers a magic attack bonus of 2, which is a pretty good alternative uh, in the early game to the Seer's Ring. The item is very low risk because it doesn't cost anything. It's a pretty good item to bring into the wilderness, doing things like Scorpia or anything where you kind of need a little bit more magic attack bonus, but you don't want to risk an extra 40 or 50k for the Seer's Ring. 40 or 50k. I mean 400 or 500k. These things used to be a lot cheaper. Now next up here is kind of an interesting one. The Cape of Accomplishments actually have pretty decent defensive bonuses, especially when you consider ranged defense. It's unlikely that the best item that you could wear for ranged is the Fire Making Cape, but they have pretty good all-round defense bonuses. And if you do have a trimmed cape, it will also give a plus four prayer bonus, which actually makes it viable in certain circumstances. And if, for example, you happen to have like the fire making cape, not related to combat at all, you could wear this at a very low combat level, which would be giving you a plus four prayer bonus, as well as a plus nine defensive bonus to all stats, which is better than the obsidian cape, which costs around 800k currently. Coming in at number 14 is the granite ring imbued. The Granite Ring Imbued offers one of the best ranged defensive bonuses in the entire game, and the item is extremely cheap. The Granite Ring is only worth around 54k, and if you imbue it with Nightmare Zone points, it gives a plus 16 ranged defense bonus. The only other item that actually offers a higher ranged defense bonus is the Ring of Suffering Imbued. So if you don't really have enough money to buy a Ring of Suffering, I would consider buying the Granite Ring and imbuing it if you really need to maximize your ranged defensive bonuses. And when it comes to defensive bonuses, often just maximizing one can actually be pretty effective because often you'll only be fighting one monster, which again often will only be using one type of attack, which you can mitigate with a niche item like the Granite Ring. The Ring of Suffering is better overall, but I mean it costs like 16 mil, the price difference is astronomical. Now you do have to keep in mind that you might not want to waste your Nightmare Zone reward points on imbuing a granite ring, however getting Nightmare Zone reward points is extremely easy and could be done before you have nearly enough money to imbue uh, something like a Ring of Suffering. And last up here is the Explorer's Ring. The Explorer's Ring actually gives a plus one prayer bonus and can be obtained in an extremely low level. It's a reward from completing the Lumbridge and Drainer Easy Diary. The stat bonuses on the Explorer's Ring 1 are the exact same as the stat bonuses on the Explorer's Ring 4, so for pure stat bonuses you really only need to do the Easy Diary. Before you have enough money to buy an offensive ring, having a plus one prayer bonus can actually add up over the long run. While it seems pretty insignificant, it actually does make a decent difference. Anyway guys, that is it for the video. Those are 15 kind of interesting items that actually offer decent stat bonuses. There are a ton of random pieces of equipment out there that I had never even heard of, because generally a meta gets formed and people just always buy that item. However, sometimes there are actually better alternatives, just that they're lesser known. Really good misconception that had been around for a while, 
was everyone bought uh, knives to train their range when actually darts were cheaper and offered the same or higher range attack bonus. And really just delve deep into what the attack bonuses actually are, not necessarily take what is the meta, just as is. Anyway guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to leave the video a like, and I will see you next time.